By my final semester of seminary, I had developed a pretty serious case of senioritis. With the end so close in sight, I found it rather challenging to muster up the motivation to finish what was starting to feel like a lot of busy work. But even so, some of my professors clearly thought this end-of-the-year work was still important. And I even remember getting a rather scolding remark on an assignment from my preaching professor, who was rather disappointed in my lack of effort. But the life of the seminary being what it is, you often found yourself in the chapel, praying along with the very teachers and classmates who had just been getting on your last nerve. <laughs> and keep in mind that the chapel at Suwani is arranged in academic seating. And what that means is the chairs are arranged so that the sides face each other rather than facing forward. So students and teachers are praying together in the chapel, and we can see one another. We can actually make eye contact if we're not careful. <laughs> and so I'm in the chapel for morning prayer, and I'm tired of assignments and tests and grades and irritated with this professor who had just scolded me when, to my delight, the psalm appointed for that morning was a portion of Psalm 119, the same portion we just read today. And so, along with my teachers and classmates, with that very professor sitting across from me, and with the weight of Holy Scripture behind it, I get to belt out that I have more understanding than all my teachers. <laughs> what vindication for a burned out seminarian. I don't really need to worry about class assignments and upcoming finals. All I need is me and my Bible. Now, of course, in hindsight, as satisfying as that was for someone feeling a little petty, I do have to admit that this framing is taking things somewhat out of context. After all, what the psalmist is talking about here is the gift of the Torah, that these words from God carry down through their community, these commandments, these laws and guidelines on how to live, are to be received as this great gift. That if they are tended to, they can teach you what it means to truly live. And of course, that's really what my professors were trying to do all along. The assignments, the tests, the praying together. The purpose of it all was to help guide me towards the true wisdom that comes from God. And that is discerned or discovered in the life of a community dedicated to following his word. And that's also what Paul is doing in this second letter to his student, Timothy. Now, Timothy is serving a community that is in conflict. There are divisions within where various teachers are contradicting one another, and there are persecutions against the community as a whole coming from their wider society. There is just no escape from conflict in this 
fledgling community. Frankly, it's enough to make them consider giving up on the whole enterprise. And so Paul, whose own death is fast approaching, is writing to encourage them, to remind them to keep the faith, to persevere in the face of challenges, and to continue to come together as a community dedicated to growing in Christ, to work through their divisions for the sake of the gospel. And the way to resolve these conflicts and discouragements, Paul suggests, is to do as the psalmist described in today's psalm, to root their community in the Holy Scriptures. This gift given to us by God because, quote, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Now, to say that Scripture is inspired for Paul means that in these stories and songs and prayers and histories, what we find is the story of God. We find in them a record of our ancestors' experience of God. And what that experience reveals is that God has come to save us. To save us from death and despair and loneliness. That he has come to right every wrong and set straight every lie. The world may have been turned upside down by sin, but what we have intended for evil God will ultimately use for good. And that story, that inspired revelation of who God is and what God is doing, is your inheritance. A gift that the psalmist calls sweeter than honey. And Paul suggests that this gift, this revelation, is given to us to be a guide for us. To be a sort of rubric, like the rubric from my preaching class that I failed to follow. <laughs> but this rubric serves to guide not just how we think about God and life and the world around us, but also a guide on how we are to live out our faith so that we might have the privilege to participate in this ongoing story of God's redemption of the world. This knowledge and wisdom from God is the very gift that we gather each week to share. A gift passed down to Paul, who passed it to Timothy, who passed it down to the next generation and the next, all the way to us, here in this room right now. Passed down to us by parents and grandparents, by friends and teachers, passed down to us by communities of faith, like this one, that we might know the truth and so persevere. For in this gift is our hope 
and our life. In it, we become wiser than the elders and gain more understanding than all our teachers. Amen. Amen.